The shadows of storm and night. The mysteries of life and light. From unearthly peculiarities, celestial and divine, to apparitions and transcendental signs. You're listening to To The Spirit Podcast. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Spirit. I'm your host, Beck. And I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. Hey, Beck. Our guest today is a psychic medium with clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient abilities. He hears and sees messages from friends and family who have crossed over to the other side. He's been a professional psychic medium for the past 17 years and has helped clients all over the world gain insight, direction, comfort, and peace through his gifts. He's made numerous appearances on television, radio, and at live events, most recently on Gaia TV's Beyond Belief with George Norrie. There's a reason he's called the Positively Psychic Medium, and we're excited to have him on our show today. Please welcome Mark Christopher Nelson. Hi, Mark. Thanks for hey, making Rebecca. the time to be with us today. Oh, uh, Rebecca, Stephanie. Hey, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here. It's an honor. What I love about you is how down to earth and positive you are. There's a real comfort and an ease about you, and I really appreciate that. Well, my, my wife, my daughter keep me in line. So does taking out the trash fixing leaks underneath the sink (laughs) or whatever else is required, you know? Can you give our audience a little history of yourself and how you came into your abilities? Sure. It started out with when I was a little kid, I was 11. It started out with a tragedy. Uh, My dad, we used to live in New Jersey. My dad had to go into New York City for work and he went in and was murdered. And so it was kind of a shock to our whole family. It was very hard. There's a whole lot of kids or six. I'm the oldest of six and my mom. And so we all started to try to cope. And one morning, mom told me, hey, go rake some leaves. And so I was out doing that. And I look up and I see my father. And I was not prepared for that. I, we, Our family wasn't, you know, it was, it was a long time ago. And I was a kid. And we were raised Catholic, and this is just not something that you're not used to seeing this, you know. So I was, on one hand, I knew Dad was looking very positive and and loving to me. He was just being Dad. He was smiling, and it was like it was joyful and made me fearful all at once because I didn't know what to do with it. So I said, I can't deal with this. And then I saw him again at school. I think. I'm losing my mind. How do I, I don't know how to cope with this. And I, Dad, please go away. I, I love you, but I don't know how to deal with this. Flash forward. I mean, I've had some psychic hits along the way. I felt like it's like I, I would get senses about this and that, but I was too busy, you know, having my career in advertising and taking care of being a dad and we bought a house. And in any case, life was happening. And one night I'm taking a walk and I think, gosh, I wish my dad could have met my wife, my daughter. Really, I'm really thrilled about having them in my life. And I kept getting this message. I have met them. I have seen them. And I kept thinking, am I just losing my marbles? What's what's the scoop? And then I basically said, if you really are my dad, tell me something I don't know. He did. He told me something about my brother. I validated that with my mom. It had to do with a new job he had gotten. And so it's like, okay. I got my first validation and I was just out going for a walk. So I thought, all right, I need to take more walks. How did this happen? How did I get this? And so I started to recognize the difference between my random thinking and thoughts and messages. And so I thought, all right, now does this only apply to family? I better go and I I need to do a cold test. So I went into a psychic bookstore. And I said, I think I'm psychic. Can I try reading someone? How can you be more flat-footed than that? Just walk in, duh. <laughs> hey, uh, I think I'm psychic. Can I read somebody who isn't doing something at the moment? I mean, the manager was nice to me. I mean, and she said, sure, well, take a minute and let's see what you get. And I got things about her son. And I thought that was kind of surprising. I, I mean, I'm kind of opening the book at the same time as everybody else when I received these messages. And so she told me, okay, go for it. We think that you've got something. Do you want to try reading for me? Sure, I'll I'll try reading for you. So I started to basically set up shop in her, her store where people, she had a couple of psychics on schedule and I started to get busier. But I wanted to go to like a bigger place. So I kept kind of, I changed my venue a few times. And so I was starting to 
get more attention. And then I started to read at home. And then the brave step of like, I wonder if this works on the phone. And it does. It, it doesn't matter. In fact, it's in some ways, I would say it's easier. And certainly I don't lose anything in terms of clarity. So then we moved to L.A. My wife works for Disney. And so uh, she did at the time, at least. We came back to Los Angeles where we met originally, went to school and all of that. And so I got a cattle call for a TV show. And this is while I'm doing readings. And someone who I clearly had read for recommended me for a show. And so I was one of 200 psychic mediums brought in for this, what we would call a cattle call for a show. And so you meet them all, every stripe of medium, every stripe of psychic. I mean, in truth, I am a psychic and a medium. I mean, depending on the messages I'm getting, it could be that it's more about medium and who's crossed over. But the people I meet on the other side basically also want to tell their loved ones in front of me, hey, look out for this or be aware of this or look out for this. We don't stop caring. So I did this show. I was one of 200. I ended up being one of six on the air. And then I was very blessed and fortunate to be the guy that won this competition. And so uh, I went from doing that to I appeared on like a bunch of TV shows. And all along, I'm still, you know, people I'm reading for people at home or by phone. And then I did a show with George Norrie. He's proven to be a wonderful friend. He wants me to do more with him, so or his producer does. So I did a show with Gaia. But I've also, prior to that, I've been on Ghost Adventures, Haunted History, Paranormal Witness, Sci-Fi. And for me, the the paranormal side came as an outgrowth of like, I was doing a platform reading for a bunch of people, doing a demonstration of psychometry where you hold objects and I'm able to hear energy from them. And in hearing the energy from them, I'm able to say, start a reading. So uh, Stephanie, Rebecca, if I, if I held your watch or a ring you wear or a pendant or something, I would get messages. And then after that, I could finish the reading. I would also purposely make a point of saying, I don't want to know who owns this because if I see, I mean, I don't want to be accused of doing a cold read where I just see some guys on a biker gang and he's huge and he's tattooed and he leaves a ring and it looks like, okay, well, you're halfway there. You can tell certain things about him. It's like, I don't want to know anything. Ironically with that, I once read like a little delicate string of like a, a little girl's bracelet. It's like a little string bracelet. And it turned out to be this muscle-bound guy who owned it. And it was for his daughter who was still here. And it was just such a funny thing. But anyway, I was doing this presentation. These guys that do paranormal investigating asked, what do you think, if, could you get something in a place with history? And say, oh, well, I did it once in a show. Let's see what else happens. So as we stand now, I do both paranormal investigating, although it's 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 a sideline compared to my main calling, which is doing readings. But I, I don't charge for those things, but I do charge for my readings because it is personal and it's very directed. But in any case, that's kind of me in a nutshell. When you work with spirit and with your psychic abilities, do you have a team that's around you? And is your father part of that? Is he one yeah. of, oh, he is, he's a guide or? Well, the way my dad showed up is that he was the first one that, that I felt like he ran interference for me. He protected me because I advise everybody. And if you go into doing this work that I believe in protecting yourself, I believe in prayer. I believe in making sure that, you know, you're, working in the light. It's like you don't want to walk into a bad neighborhood and be caught unawares. So because I have walked into bad spiritual psychic environments where I felt like I was under an oppression. It's a very rare thing, but I believe it happens. So I asked dad to help me. He introduced me to other guides. These other guides have proven to be helpful, protective. But when I'm reading for other people, it, it can be their family members who show up. It can be their guides who provide insight about, you know, should you move? Look out for your daughter. Your daughter is, looks like your daughter's having a difficult patch in a relationship. Your ex-husband is causing problems that could be embarrassing. I mean, some of that just literally showed up last night, which is why it's fresh on my mind. So they definitely show up. They're there. And I think that if you get used to working with them and relying on them, it makes all the difference. 
because if I'm not being given information by my guides or my client's guides, I'm just this guy with a dumb look on my face waiting for something to happen. <laughs> Do you also receive global messages or messages on a larger scale that aren't just directed at one client or one person? I do. And, you know, usually they show up and I get senses about something bigger occurring. But when I'm talking to my client, I'm trying to be very deliberate about information that applies to them. So, for example, if something related to COVID impacts them directly, I will speak to it. A good example of some global thing that happened was I was flying on the actual day of 9-11 when the attacks occurred on the uh, on the Trade Center in New York. I was up in the air landing in Philadelphia almost at the same time that the attacks were occurring. But the night before, I had this kind of gut feeling like, I just want to make sure my wife knows I love her. And you know I say it, but I just wanted to let her know I'm thinking of you, I care about you. And so before I left, I arranged for a bouquet of flowers to arrive when I was gone. And it's just a way of saying, hello, I'll be gone in business for like a, a day or two. So I would say that my gut feeling about something being wrong on that day proved to be, I, I was feeling something. And this is really like going back to like a one when I really wasn't actively doing this work, but I was feeling it and starting to really pay attention to what I was feeling. So when the flower showed up and then she couldn't reach me, she really freaked out because all the phone lines jammed, and I was basically running around in Philadelphia trying to figure out how to get back to Ohio, where we were living at the time, and I was with clients and some colleagues, and the world was upside down because where we were in that place, to the north was the attack in New York, to the south was D.C., and then we literally, on the way home, drove by the field where a plane went down the field. But all of that together, it's like, I felt like there's something wrong. I'm having trouble putting a finger on it. So that was like an interesting example. And then as for things with the elections, what's happening with COVID, my sense is that, for example, we will start to see a pretty big opening up of the country. I feel like by March, April, people are going to start to see that there is hope. There's going to be a lot less fear. I think that there is going to be a very strong move towards life before what life was like prior to COVID, it's going to have a ripple effect like so many other things. And we're not going to forget what we've learned and we're not going to stop all precautions. But there definitely will be a return or a move towards us having some of the things that we've had in our life before come back to us. I've noticed during this time, during this pandemic, there's been an increase in paranormal activity or energy. A lot of people I've spoken with have been hearing voices or having strange occurrences happen. And I'm not so sure if it's just because they're homebound. I'm starting to think that maybe there's something bigger to this. Do you have any ideas as to what it may be? Well, it's interesting. I, I think that when we're sitting at home, our level of angst is through the roof. We're worried about things. I think that our loved ones on the other side are trying to help us, reach out to us. And my first contacts with people on the other side were nerve wracking. I was not happy about them. I was afraid of it. I didn't know what to make of it. So for that reason, I think that all these people sitting at home, having a little more time to be at home, and then raising their level of anxiety, nervousness, fear, all of those things are, I think, contributing to a higher level of paranormal psychic activity. Also, too, for all of our listeners, I want people to know that they may not be aware of it, but they're probably going through a lot of stress. So, I mean, a lot of people who are self-aware are saying, okay, I know this is a bad, crazy time. And then there's other people that are more reacting to their feelings without considering the source. So I would say that anybody who's like, if you're feeling extra crazed right now, really step back and say, okay, there's a lot going on. This is an unusual time. This is not the new normal. This is the temporary normal. And that for us to just be aware of that, we don't have to react to every feeling, good, bad, or indifferent. We have to be conscious of them. We have to, if you're feeling very angry and frustrated, look at the source and then look at a, a positive way to manage it. And that's what I would suggest that we do. 
and positive ways could be picking up a phone and talking to a friend and saying, I'm feeling a little freaked out today. And then rather than just sitting in a generalized sense of anxiety, taking a look at like what might have triggered that. And I think that that's fairly useful. I'm not a trained therapist. I refer people if I see someone who's struggling with something at a very meaningful level. If I see someone who's doing something that's you know, that if they're giving me, say, for example, kind of self-destructive language, I'm hearing it. I definitely say, look, I'm, I want to stay in a place where I can be supportive, but I think that you might want to consider speaking to a therapist. Don't isolate yourself. Be with a friend. Speak to someone. Pick it up. Don't be disconnected. All of those things, I think, do factor into what we're, many of us are experiencing now and what that energy can conduct. Create. With psychic abilities like what you have, you had a childhood experience with your father and then there was like a gap for a while and yes. then, then it picked up. And I've had similar experiences myself where it's all of a sudden I've had extremely psychic or spiritual experiences, but then they're gone. And so what would you say to something like that when I'm going through like gaps, you know, where yours has been consistent? And I have to say, I actually practice my faith. I'm a practicing Catholic. And, you know, when I look at the mystics and all these people, uh, the saints, mm -hmm. they're not much different than you. And that's what makes me upset, too, is when I hear from Christians that this stuff is not right. I've met many holy people within the church who did things like psychometry. Mm -hmm. I was sick. I was living in Italy and I was not well. And someone took my ID that I had uh, and took it for a week and then was able to tell me what was wrong with me. Huh. And it was still very mysterious, like what they told me, but they were later on down the road, they were spot on. And these were practicing Catholic people that are involved in their faith. When I hear about people, they call themselves psychics. I look at that and I go, that's a mystic. <laughs> Going back to what I was saying is how would you explain that gap? Hold that thought. I believe that all rivers lead to the ocean. Rivers are like uh, religions and that the ocean is God, if you can follow that analogy. So, I, I mean, I was, like I said, raised Catholic. I still say, you know, the Lord's Prayer. I say Hail Mary's because it puts me in a state of being able to hear things and provide some clarity. But I would also say before we get too far, read Mark 9, 38, 39. There's a point in the Bible in this reference, this verse, the apostles observe another man doing deeds in the name of Christ. I if I recollect properly, I think it has to do with like driving the devil out, but he was doing it in Christ's name, driving the devil into like a herd of pigs or something, I think is the reference, Mark 9, 38, 39. The apostles observed this, go to Jesus and say, Lord, what should we do? Should we make this man stop what he's doing? And he says, if they're not against me, they're calling my name, they're for me. They are for me. So I would say that the people call them mystics, call them psychics. If they're operating in the light, they're trying to be positive, have a positive, loving influence on the people in front of them, next to them. We're not working against organized religion. We're not working against Christianity. All right. So we're not working against Catholicism. We are doing things to promote love, promote healing, promote support. That's really important to me because I used to be part of Campus Crusade for Christ when I was in college. <laughs> I've gone from this and it's true. It really was. You know, they're saying you should be a minister. It's like, yeah, I'm not really feeling that. I'm not sure that I should. And they, I was kind of being recruited for that. And it's like, no, this isn't really... There's something that isn't, it's close, but no cigar, you know? In, in any case, going back to the idea that you have gaps, I would say that there are people, I'll use kind of a, a sports analogy, where there are great players that are on and then great players that have slumps. And this is part of the human condition. For me, I mean, there are times when I'm reading, it's like, okay, this is easy. This is fast. I'm in. And what I mean by in, it's like, I can hear it. I'm in the zone where I need to be. I'm not anywhere else. I'm completely, fully present and available to hear the message. So in that case, for you, that you might be distracted, that there are distractions that can occur. And that also, too, I relearn things. I forget, like, I'll be in a, in a place where it's like everything is flowing. I'm listening and I'm grateful. And then I get distracted and then my confidence slips. I mean, 
here we're, we're all humans you know stephanie rebecca we're all just you know even like really good people in their profession their calling their special gift have moments of failing and support or loss but i always say this and it helps me kind of take a more open fearless approach is that i reserve the right to be wrong i am going to be wrong but my batting average is pretty darn good it's relatively good if i do say but with that you know it frees you from having to say okay what if i'm wrong because i mean everyone who does this work i mean we're not talking about should i buy blueberries or strawberries are the should i wear a black belt today or a brown one no it's like we're talking to someone's mother their mother is trying to, you know, explain to them that I'm better now. I'm no longer uh, on oxygen. I'm no longer struggling. Or, you know, the child that died is like, I understand that my passing hurt and, and this caused a endless ripple effect of pain on the people that were left behind. So I take these opportunities to be of service really seriously. But I also know that if I put so much pressure on myself, I won't be of any use to anybody. And here's a trick. I've got a trick, a couple of tricks in my bag. Let me take one of them out and show you, and you can use it. Um, I've gotten, like, I've, I've been very blessed, fortunate to get up in front of a large group of people, hundreds of people to do, re like, platform reading. And that's a big jump from going to where I think I can read for individuals. I can read for two or three people sitting in a room. Now there's 800 people, and I'm standing up in front of them, I'm not in my comfort zone, or at least my traditional place of operating and, and providing messages. So what I do in that context, is I say, hey, Mark, you're really annoying me. Your nervousness is just so disruptive. Please go take a nap. Or Mark, go back to the hotel room, put your feet up, and just relax for a little bit. We're, we're working here. So I really try to send my ego away, try to send this id, this, this center where you know, when you step out and do this work, you have to really rely so heavily, completely, you have to rely completely on the messages you receive and that your own anxiety or fear or worry can be static. It can serve as a disruption between what you want to do and where you want to be in terms of your mindset to help other people. Do you believe that everyone is psychic to some degree? Yeah, completely. And I also think too that Let's say you're in a place where it's like, I could really use a little extra help right now. Something is happening. I do feel like that for any and every person is capable of getting or receiving a powerful message. And that powerful message may come along at a time when you're in great need. I'm lost. My child is missing. Where are my car keys? Or it's like, you know, it can be any number of things and you get a message that can be informative and helpful. So I would also say to look at it, I'd like to draw the analogy that psychic ability is like singing ability. I can sing very badly. And with training, extensive training, I would probably be almost tolerable. But then uh, some people are born, but they, they show up, they're one and a half years old, and they're carrying a tune. They're gifted right off the bat. With a little training and effort and a little focus, they become prodigies. Just the, as there are prodigies in painting, there are people that appear gifted with acting, singing, accounting, any aspect of our lives, engineers. It, it really comes down to like you were born with a certain level of skill or a gift or a talent. And then it comes down to, do you honor that talent? Do you honor that ability with a focus, with taking it seriously, with being thankful for it? All of those things come together in a way that can help you define what this ability is. And in terms of defining it, I like to think that what each of us has is growing always. It's like, you know, you can cut the, the grass or the weeds in the backyard or pull the weeds, they grow back, they come back. And so what I would say is that the more you nurture and pay attention to it, the stronger it can and will become. And that you don't know what, I mean, I didn't know what I could do with this thing but I've tried very actively not to put barriers and saying, no, I'm only this. No, I only do that. Because actually what happens is that, let's say I'm reading for you, Rebecca, and maybe you have a great strength and you're an excellent writer, let's say, for example. 
and that you're very comfortable with the written word. I may get more word messages for you, about you, from you. Um, Stephanie, you may be more of a visual arts person. And then so I may receive messages that resonate from a visual perspective on what you do. The other part of this whole equation is that let's say your mother on the other side was a dancer. She was quite lyrical in the way she moved and she was very, very uh, a, a vibrant physical presence. She may come across and show me things that are really interesting that I can see in a visual way and describe to you. So it really isn't just about the radio. I'm the radio. What's on the radio is what comes through. And what you want to listen to is what you hear. And it's a psychic muscle as well uh, that you have True. to work in order to grow that ability that is assigned to you. Well, I would just say the psychic muscle, I like to think of it as I like to get mileage. How much mileage? You know, it's like anytime you're afraid of going up on and reading for a group, reading for someone, doing video, doing email, whatever it is, an email reading, a voice reading, video, you know, I'm being, people want to do Zoom calls and I'm, I, I kind of like, look around when I'm doing readings. I like to focus in other places. And I do other things like that, that um, I don't, I try not to get in the way is really what it is. And I try not to say, oh, I can't do this. I'll never do that. It's like, well, you don't know that. You don't know and let, let yourself be helped. When you are working with clients, and this is, this is going to be a little bit out there, have you ever come into contact with something maybe interdimensional or not of this world? Yes, um, that happened. I went to fairly recently, and it also makes me wonder about other experiences I had. I went out and thought I was going to do kind of a, a typical, all right, to, to say something is a typical paranormal investigation, that's a gross... Uh, uh, I don't mean, you never know what you're going to get. But I mean, I really expected it to be human. I expected either an animal energy or I expected, I was fearful that there would be a demonic presence because I, I do think the demons are, are, are like that. I do think that they exist. I believe there's good and evil. That also has been very much about strengthening my faith. I truly believe that once you encounter something evil, it does impact how you look at a lot of other things. Back to the interdimensional. I saw, we thought that this is such a powerful, I mean, I was with a team, um, I have really good friends on Pacific Coast Paranormal. They're very professional. It was founded by a guy named Stefan Brigatti, and Barbara also joins me on these. My wife is Barbara. And I have other wonderful team members, Tara, Mike, and um, they're, they're exceptional. They're very talented. They know how to do things. But we find that we complement each other and validate each other. So when I was getting, it's like, there's something unusual here. It seems to be going after me. I literally felt something punching me or slapping me in the face. Like, I'm, I'm like, it was like, it wasn't hurting, but it was just like this pressure again. And it's like, what the heck? What is that? And so they have these cameras that they focused on me. And through this camera, you could see that there was a green, like a tall, slender figure, like a stick figure, who was literally hitting me in the face. And I'm saying, there's something hitting me in the face. Get this on camera. Tell me what you're seeing now. And they did. We saw this stick figure green thing smacking me in the face, and then it just disappeared. And so it made me think that, okay, it went from like being very present to just, it's almost like a, it opened and closed a sliding door and went away. And it was just, it was there, we could see it, it's six feet tall, or there was four foot tall ones, they just like open and close shut. And we watch it on camera because they recorded it. So, wow. you know, I think that it was just like, that's pretty wild, it really is. The other thing that I got that made me think that this might've been an interdimensional, not simply a ghost, so to speak, or a spirit, I kept hearing what sounded like hissing voices, like it was. It sounded like another language. I described it. Sounds like hissing and slurring and this kind of a weird noise. And my friends have also had some experience with what would be considered interdimensional or alien communications, and so they felt that I was 
actually describing something that would be more of an interdimensional or be considered uh, a non-human communication. And as you guys know this work, that you start saying things like, well, if this is true, then maybe this is true. Or maybe that's what actually happened. You start backing up the truck, back up the truck. Let's see what we got here. All right. Let's see. I mean, if that happened, then maybe those other things weren't quite what I expected too. So much of this work takes you to new places you just don't expect to always go. And that if you have already written out the outcome, you're going to miss what's there. You can't make the evidence fit your very narrow diagnosis of what may be going on. It's very important to be open, to look, to see. And at that point, you start to see other things. Yeah. It seems strange to me that they were almost malevolent. They were not nice to me. I mean, they, and they also, the other thing I found too, is that if you guys do go into an environment where, uh, and you do have, and you exercise your psychic ability, that they're going to be conscious of you. Okay. And they're going to want to reach out and focus on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's comforting. <laughs> you know, no, truly what it is, it's like, you, let's say you're in a foreign country and everyone is speaking another language around you. And then off to the right, you hear someone speaking English. You're going to go, well, who are they? I'm going to go check them out. Well, it's similar to if they're speaking and I'm the only one who hears them, or I'm the only one reacting to them, that's going to garner their attention. Now, do you use prayers of protection or anything when you go into those environments? Completely. I'm, I mean, I always, I, I say I surround myself in the white light of love and divine protection. I will allow only positive energy to influence me. I will not allow the negativity of others to affect me in any way. If I do a house clearing, I say all negative energy must leave this home and variations on that theme. In addition, I always say our fathers and Hail Marys, because if I can hear the words in my head saying that very clearly, understanding the feeling, the focus. When I can hear my own thoughts in my head very clearly and unobstructed, unrushed, then I'm getting in the, the proper place to hear messages from other people in spirit. Do you find that most of the time they're compliant with this? Or have you found that maybe there's some stragglers that possibly bother you or follow you? I've been bothered and followed. By and large, for the most part, they... I'd say, you know what it is? It's like you have to convince them to leave. And you can do that by either saying, you know, if you go to the light, let's say if you're dealing with, there are a lot of people in spirit who are confused or they're afraid of going to the light because of judgment. I've dealt with both victims, people who are confused at the time of their passing and were unwilling or unable to accept the fact that they were no longer on the physical plane. They think it's another year. They think it's another century. They don't want to hear that it's 2020. They don't want to know that. They don't understand when you hold up like, here's a small EMF meter. Um, you say, this is this little lighted device won't hurt you. You figure that if their consciousness comes from 120 years ago or, or 200 years ago or 50 years ago, they're going to be unfamiliar with some of the trappings that are part of your presentation to them. They're not going to get it. You have to explain it. Also, too. I mean, I remember very clearly dealing with a guy that appeared to be a criminal, like he was a murderer. And I had to explain to him, but my sense was, is that he was someone that it's like, okay, my sense is that you were raised in a Judeo-Christian setting. I felt like that we were in a place where it was like uh, a bunch of, I thought that they were like uh, Spanish outlaws, frankly, is what they looked like. I've also run into bikers where that was kind of a, a strange, interesting thing, too. And uh, murderers, just flat out serial killers. I, I usually try to tell them, if you go to the light, there is love and forgiveness there. God is a loving and forgiving presence. Universal energy is, I believe that the universe is a positive place, a loving place, and that we can get messages of support, that if we come to God, universal energy, whatever term that you're comfortable with, and say, I come here understanding that what I did was wrong, forgive me, and you will be forgiven. I believe that you will. I believe that part of forgiveness is understanding how to avoid doing that again. It isn't just a get out of jail card so you can go back and murder more people in your next incarnation. 
It doesn't really work that way from what I can gather. And I say that with humility, from what I see, that if you go to the light and you say, you know, I don't want to do this again, and I believe in reincarnation, that sets me off the Christian platform, although there are Gnostic texts that, you know, Christian Gnostic, um, if I'm saying it wrong, forgive me, but the idea is, is that we would come back. I, I'd like to think that I'm here, we come here, I'm sitting at this desk to learn something. I'm sitting, I'm talking to you to, to share something. And as are you guys, you're making a concerted effort to share something that will help people understand their place in the universe, help them feel more comfortable, help them get help. You know, uh, you're, you're supporting that effort. That's what we're supposed to be doing here. We're supposed to be helping people raise their consciousness, find peace, find abundance, find strength, find ways to help each other. That's why we're here. We're supposed to learn how to do these things, even if it's incrementally. And, you know, the idea that if you can do it in one part of your life or others, I mean, whatever it is that you came into this world, that was my mission. That's why I'm here. This is why. And so people who, you know, pass as infants to 98 years old, I believe we all come here with a, an intention and purpose. And to some level or degree, our next incarnation is informed by what we experienced most recently. That's just how it appears to me. And that's how I'm trying to move forward. I feel the same. I am here to serve. I am here to share as much love and abundance and, and information I can within my life here on earth. On the other side, when you're waiting for your next incarnation, I think that this is it's almost like the difference in school. Sometimes you would go to the lecture. And other times you'd go to the study hall or go to the study where you get your hands dirty. Being in between, as I would say, is like going to the lecture. You gain information, you hear it, and then you put it into practical use in each incarnation. You talking about how you're here to serve, and that must bring you a lot of joy to see good results, especially when you're trying to help people. Can you tell us anything about your most joyful or happy psychic moment that you've had? Yeah, well, one just came to mind. I had a client, and her English was pretty good, but she didn't sound like she was very well educated. But then I saw this like presence. I heard an M name connected to her, Mac. And then I realized, okay, this is feels like a young person, feels like a youthful energy. I'm seeing like this person liked Mac and cheese. This person was like all about love. And it turns out this really generous, loving woman had adopted a special needs child who had passed the month before. Oh. And so it was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not, imper I try to be dispassionate in my work because I feel like if I'm not holding it together in spite of my emotions, I'm not very useful. So I trying to, I was trying to be helpful, but trying not to, I can't just start coming apart when I'm hearing like she's saying that, like she told this girl in spirit showed me that she used to be restricted to a wheelchair, but then she showed me an image of a ballerina. And she told her mother to, instead of looking down to see her, to look up because she was no longer restricted to a chair, unable to move. She was standing up. And then she kept showing me this ballerina. And so I said, it looks like a ballerina that you might see in an old fashioned jewelry box. You know, one of these little spinning things that goes across a mirror or something, some little magnetic toy device. And then she says, well, my daughter did have a box like that. She made, she actually, and I said, I see her making jewelry. She's making jewelry. And she, you know, shared messages of love. So I'm no longer down. I'm no longer in the chair. I'm now standing upright. I'm here for you. I'm not, you're walking to me. We can still take walks at sunset, which was something that she would push her down to the beach to see the sunsets. She was mentioning, this is, I'm the ballerina. I'm tall. I'm beautiful. And this was enormously helpful for my client because she was just torn up by not having this loving special needs child in her life who had passed from complications from health issues at her birth. So it was just that one. It's like, okay, don't cry now. Don't, don't come apart. This isn't really, you're not helping them by crying with them. Be present. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> to, That's so healing and beautiful. And it was beautiful. And it was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So that helped her a lot. And that there have been other people like that. I get messages in other languages that it's like, oh, that's what that means. I'll phonetically say something and I'll find out like just one of them. This woman lost a teenage daughter and it was she was killed walking in the dark on the side of the road just a little bit before Christmas. And this woman had a European accent that I couldn't put a finger on. And I kept hearing this like, blah, 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 blah. It was blah, blah, blah to me because I'm Charlie Brown. I'm hearing Charlie Brown kind of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but, it, but it's like in another language. So I'm just the dumbbell that isn't picking it up. It's like, I don't know what that means. I, and so I said, does this mean anything to you? Blah, blah, blah. And she said, you just said Christmas tree in Russian. It's like, oh, okay. Then it's Then it was like, your daughter told me that you haven't put up a Christmas tree this year because you can't celebrate because of her passing. Her passing has hurt you. You can't enjoy the holiday anymore. Your daughter's like raising, you know, raising her, getting excited. Put up a tree. Do it for me. Be here. Be present and enjoy the holiday. Don't not celebrate something that you love so much because you think it would hurt me. I want you to do this. And it was just like, oh my God, that one, I just like, oh, okay, well, come on, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, I'm just, uh, as a dad who would lose a teenage daughter at the time, my daughter was a teenager, and just, anyway, I managed to get it back, to, but it was just like, all right, this helped. And she was like, so thankful. And I was just so thankful. And it's just a reminder that people in spirit can dramatically influence the choices we make. And they want to. They're still there for us. Where can people find you if they're interested? I have a website, marknelsonmedium.com. Marknelsonmedium.com. I used to call myself the positively psychic medium, but people apparently have trouble spelling positively and psychic in the same little thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just marknelsonmedium.com. Wonderful. Get. What would you say to our listeners, uh, a message of sorts? Well, consciousness survives the body, that I can't be any more clear about it, that even if you, you're looking at your loved one in a coffin or in a memorial and you're holding their ashes, their consciousness is still there for you. They don't stop loving you. They don't stop caring about you. They still have advice for you if you're open to hearing it. They want you to be okay. And they also want you to know that even in the time of COVID, if there was no one there at their bedside, they did not die alone. There was someone in spirit on the other side waiting for them. From the moment they complete that slow blink that takes them from here in the physical to there in spirit, there are a myriad of people waiting for them to guide them. So please, as much as you feel maybe I let them down or I could have, should have, or I couldn't, or I wanted to, there's someone in spirit on the other side who is capable of helping and being present to guide them and to make sure that they're okay. And that's how it works. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for being here with us, making time to talk with us. Well, Stephanie, Rebecca, I, I was honored when you guys reached out and I appreciate it very much. I hope that if I can be of help to people that they can reach out and, and I look forward to it. And thank you for giving me a chance to, to speak to people, to your audience. Thank you. We loved having you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Both of you guys and, and, and blessings to all of uh, your listeners. Have a wonderful holiday season too. You as you well. You too. Bye, Mark. Bye-bye. To the spirit. Podcast. Supernatural science. Alien. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. Thank you. Spirit. Divine source. Heaven. The dead. Magic, magic, magic.